Hi, I'm Frances Armstrong. I just graduated from the College of William & Mary, and now I'm a fellow here at the Smithsonian Tropical Research Institute in Panama. Um, I'm conducting a project that looks at the larval development of hybrid sea biscuits. Sea biscuits are a type of echinoderm found in the eelgrass beds here. There are two pre prevalent species in the area. The two species diverged about 8 million years ago, but they can still hybridize. No study has looked at the hybrids past fertilization, however, so that's where my study is picking up. It's an interesting system for studying hybridization as the two species have different modes of larval development. Um, one of the species has small eggs and the larva must feed in order to reach metamorphosis. The other species has much larger eggs, so the the larvae have enough endogenous energy that they don't need to feed during their larval development, but they still retain um, larval feeding structures, and so they can feed if food is present. My study is investigating what mode of development the hybrids will take. Uh, many studies have looked into how manipulating egg size affects larval mode of development, but so many fewer have looked into how manipulating genomic content affects larval development. With my study, I'm able to see how both egg size and genomic contents play into larval development. Um, so, the species I work with are broadcast spawners, which means that they just release their gametes into the ocean without any mating display. And so, on this dead sea biscuit, you can clearly see the gonadopores. Uh, there's five little holes, and that's where they release their gametes from. So, here I have some sea biscuits spawning already. Uh, as you can see, there's a lot of egg coming out in distinct streams from each gonadopore, and as soon as it's subdepressive. And then we also have a female rosaceous, and you can already kind of see that the eggs are a lot bigger than over here. So the females, we invert them over beakers to collect the eggs in water. Um, and then the males, we want to collect the sperm dry so that it stays viable longer. And so we don't put them in water. I'll just pipette the sperm off their um, backs <laughs> into centric use tubes. And then um, use it once we're ready to set up an experiment.